So in the past few years, the bum ditty has gotten a bad rap, and I'm part of the problem. I've sort of relegated the bum ditty style of play to sort of a folk heavy, kind of hoaxy way to play claw hammer banjo. And the more I think about it and the more I teach people how to play claw hammer, the more I'm understanding the bum ditty as an essential component to becoming a really great player. So today I'm going to backtrack a little bit. I've been pushing a double thumbing pattern, but lately I've sort of rediscovered the importance of the bum ditty and I wanna show you guys why it's important and how to work on it in your own playing. Today on Banjo Quest. So let's just review really quick. I favor teaching and starting with a double thumbing pattern. I'm in G. Double thumbing is simply doing a thumb after every downstroke. If you want to know more about the basic mechanics of what I'm doing, refer to my previous video called The Golden Rule of Claw Hammer Banjo. I'll link that in the description below. That will be useful for review if you want to know more about that mechanic that I just showed you. Now, what happens when we start to add the left hand is the double thumbing pattern has to give way. We have to delete part of the pattern to make room for notes that we're producing with the left hand. Let me show you. So if I've got a hammer-on pattern on the third fret of the third string, and then I perform a ditty after that, I'll roll that pattern for you so you can hear all of it. If I take away the left hand of that pattern and just play what I'm playing underneath that hammer-on pattern, you're going to hear something very interesting. Underneath that all eighth note pattern, I'm using that left hand to generate that additional eighth note, I am playing the bum ditty. That's what's underlying that entire pattern. So if we eschew practicing the bum ditty, if we get rid of focusing on getting that really good with our right hand, we're going to have difficulty when it comes to fretting the instrument and producing these beautiful open rolling eighth note patterns because we are essentially replacing the fifth string of a double thumbing pattern, replacing that first fifth string in that pattern with a hammer on. And in order to do that, we have to delete the fifth string, which creates that bum ditty pattern. So let me give you some other examples of where the bum ditty underpins an eighth note pattern. We've got the hammer on, right? Let's go for a slide pattern. Delete the left hand. So we've got a slide pattern followed by a ditty. We've also got pull off patterns. And of course, my favorite pattern on the banjo or my favorite family of patterns on the banjo are the alternate string pull-off patterns. So while the double thumbing pattern, that all eighth note pattern that we generate with our right hand only is important and is a great starting place for all people who want to learn how to play call hammer banjo, you can't ignore the bum ditty. It's going to come and get you if you don't face it head on. Now what's going on with the bum ditty? Why is it different? 
Well, it looks the same, right? If I were to play you a double thumbing pattern, and then play a bum ditty pattern, again, To the untrained eye, nothing, nothing should look different. What's happening within the mechanics of that pattern is I am either activating the fifth string on the downstroke, and by activating, I mean push into it and sort of put pressure on it like this so that when I extract my hand, it sounds, or I'm not activating it. So the bum ditty is all about, for me, in my mind, an activation or non-activation of the fifth string. So on the first stroke, I throw my hand down into the banjo, I come into contact with that fifth string, but I don't activate it. I simply rest on it, and then on the upstroke, I leave it, but I don't sound it. This plays back into the golden rule from my last video, so if you want more clarification on this, go back and look at that video. I throw my hand into the banjo, contact the fifth string, come up on the upstroke and prepare for the ditty. And on the ditty, my thumb activates the fifth string, meaning I push down into it. And then sounding it is simply a matter of extracting my hand vertically from the instrument, nice and slow. So in my mind, it's the activation or non-activation of that fifth string that makes the bum ditty what it is. Double thumbing is simply activating that fifth string after every downstroke. Now, when we're using one of the big three families of patterns with the left hand, that's pull off, slide, and hammer on, we've got to use the bum ditty to make room for that left hand move. So those three moves I just showed you, With a little bit of change, you suddenly realize that we're playing Cripple Creek. <laughs> Underneath that entire pattern, I am playing a bum ditty with my right hand. So what's your next step? If you want to get good at the bum ditty, it's nice to be able to get rid of the left hand, delete it just like I showed you, and practice a single note bum ditty. Don't worry about the brush, especially in the beginning. The brush is something that is going to come later and can cause a lot of confusion because it does introduce a little bit of a lateral mechanic to some of the strokes that you're doing in the pattern. So I advocate a linear, one note at a time, bum ditty to get good at the bum ditty. And my favorite pattern for bum ditty and getting good at it is downstroke on the third and downstroke on the first. So the pattern is. When I'm doing this slowly, I'm making sure that all of those notes are equal volume, equal intensity, and that timing between the initial quarter note and those two eighths is the right timing. The other thing that I hear all the time when students are practicing the bum ditty is the two eighth notes for some reason get compressed. They kind of stick together a little bit and it creates this um, very stiff, uh, ungainly sound. So something like this. You can hear how the whole pattern starts to collapse. It doesn't sound right. So make sure you're seeing that eighth note grid into the bum ditty. One and two and 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 one and two and. Remember, the first and of that pattern is silent but I'm still subdividing it in my head because that allows me to sort of put my pattern up against a grid to verify that is it is correct or not.
So let me give you some varieties of different tempos. I'm going to include a check pattern. So this helps you verify that the mechanics of your right hand are sort of stayed the same between bum ditty and a double thumbing pattern. Let me play you that check pattern at a variety of different tempos. Faster. Let's get this thing cooking. Now, once you get that comfortable and sort of automatic with your right hand, then you can start adding some of these left hand techniques to fill it out and make it an all eight note sound. So I would, to start, I would just simply add that pattern that I showed you at the top of the lesson to the bum ditty side of that check pattern. So let me play you the check pattern with our added hammer on. So we'll be going into more depth and I will be including tab of all of this plus some more exercises for those of you who are Patreon subscribers. And also over on Patreon, I put a roadmap for the next month, what I'm going to be covering. I've got some really exciting things coming up, including a crooked tune for the first time in Banjo Quest. We're going to take a look at what makes a crooked tune tick, what makes it crooked, and how you can take ideas from crooked tunes and apply them to tunes that are more square to sort of add a lot of interest and excitement to your playing and your arrangements. So hop on over to Patreon, that's all coming this month. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and I will see you next time on Banjo Quest.